welcome back to Open Your Eyes. If you're joining us now, we are now going to be talking about some issues affecting the sugar industry in the Caribbean. And we are currently joined by our Carl James, um, who is the SAC chairman, Mac McLachlan, who is the BSI SAC, uh, sorry, SAC director, and uh, Ray Martinez, who is the ASR regional commercial director. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. And thank you for joining us. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So, the first thing I guess we can talk about is the sugar stakeholders meetings, which um, took, well, one has taken place already, one is, go is, is um, gonna happen today. Um, what are the biggest issues, I suppose, that w have been discussed so far mm -hmm. um, in terms of sugar, the future of the sugar industry? Mm -hmm. Well, shall I kick off? Sure. Yeah. Um, we started this journey uh, three years ago with a, a sugar stakeholder meeting in Jamaica where we were looking at changes in the um, dynamics of the global sugar market, and particularly the loss, loss to us of uh, the value of our traditional EU market. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Now, it's an ironic situation. We've said the same thing on this show before, <laughs> that um, we produce around 500,000 tons of sugar for a demand of 300,000 in CARICOM, and we import... 200,000 of refined sugar from outside the region, displacing the market opportunity for our sugars. And the, part of the reason is because of uh, the type of sugar produced. Uh, in the CARICOM, we're correcting that with a lot of investment, uh, moving up the value chain, producing food grade sugar. Um, the other reason is because the, the way the um, common external tariff is structured at the moment, uh, there it, it, it blunts the incentiveness for um, you know, for for the kind of investments that are required, the reason for that is that um, traditionally there wasn't the ability to provide the market with uh, with white sugar that was, uh, you know, required in some cases, um, and uh, therefore there's a way of getting exemptions from the common external tariff to import extra regional white sugar. However, what we've been uh, doing really in the main part of our job. Uh, is to talk to manufacturers to say what do you need, what, mm -hmm. what kind of sugars do you want to do, We're, we can provide whatever you want in whatever way, but uh, what we do need in order to uh, ensure we have an incentive for that investment is that when we can provide that sugar um, that the common external tariff will apply to extra regional sugar coming into the region. Um, Otherwise, what happens is you put a lot of investment in place, you produce the right kind of sugar, but when the world market price goes down um, and it seems advantageous for industrial users of sugar to import uh, extra regional sugar, which you know, is, is effectively being dumped into the region, um, then uh, you know, that investment is, is, is worthless. So mm -hmm. what we're saying is, look, we can provide a long-term security of supply security of quality, security of everything that industrial users of sugar require. Uh, we're doing it actually. Uh, we're putting the investment in. What we would like to see is a regulatory structure that supports that system. It's actually going to be better for everyone in the end, including industrial users of sugar and consumers, because we will be able to provide sugar over a longer term period of time that takes away the pricing volatility of the global market. Mm -hmm. This is such an integral issue and in, in for many reasons. One, clearly, because the survival of our agricultural sector is important to all of us, mm -hmm. and, and that's locally in Belize. But there's also, um, I think when we look at the element of what this means for our regional integration process and how people view it and how effective it is for us. And, and that's where I want to get, Carlin. It, I was very surprised yesterday. We saw the interview with uh, our Minister of Agriculture, um, Honorable Godwin Hulls, and he, I mean, he said bluntly, he said, listen, if, if we're talking about a common market, yeah. but we're being shut out of the market, yeah. then what is the purpose? Correct. And this is not necessarily a great indicator for a movement that has been ongoing in the Caribbean for so long. Carl, talk to me, you know, as, as, as the uh, head of the, um, the sure. SAC, just how have we not been able to make progress with this issue as yet? I think because there has been a greater influence on the politicians by what I call, or what we call the traders, than the manufacturers. Mm. 
the Caribbean, whether we like it or not, is a combination of people who do trading than production. Now, the, the sugar market in the region is one of the oldest. Mm -hmm. Jamaica goes way back over 300 years. So, so the West Indies sugar people have been around from last century. Mm -hmm. However, most of the sugar that we had produced at that time was sent to the, the, the refinery in, in the US, UK, and then we'd buy back refined sugar. Up to 1997 in Jamaica, we were refining sugar. Later than that, we were refining sugar in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. mm. However, because it was always, and Mark referred to it, cheaper to buy the residual sugar from the world market. Which means leftover. Leftover. What they couldn't sell. What they could not sell in arrangements mm -hmm. and what they couldn't consume locally. Mm -hmm. And out of a is nearly 200 million tons of sugar is produced. Mm. It's about 35 that is on the world market. Mm. And there's about eight, this is eight, yeah. eight <laughs> countries <laughs> who supply. The biggest one is um, um, Brazil, mm -hmm. Brazil, Thailand, Australia, India, India not much export. No, it's true. India. Yeah. India. Mm -hmm. Colombia, now India, Guatemala, South Africa. Maybe, just about eight. So they put on the market what they can't sell, so the price is always depressed. Mm -hmm. And our guys, who like what Maurice Bishop said, we are invoice technologists. <laughs> we, we buy and sell. Mm -hmm. They guys buy. So, in, so instead of investing, investing in a sugar industry that has a base that you can build on mm -hmm. and employs people, is one of the most democratic um, industry you have in the Caribbean. From the cane cutter down there, mm -hmm. to all the people who work in maintaining the cane, to the factory, to the distribution, to transport, it's one of the most dynamic. And it's not only in Jamaica, it's the same across the country. However, the guys are prepared to invest their money in building warehouses for imports, rather than building up our sugar industry. Give you an example. One American fellow, he's Mexican American, invested in a liquid sugar factory in Trinidad, was producing and supplying the beverage industry. Mm -hmm. He had to close it last year. The manufacturers are not buying his liquid sugar because they can buy their, the residual sugar from the world. Cheaper market. sugar. Cheaper. Yeah. So I spoke to him before I came down here. He says, Carl, I will and only go back into it if there is what we have been fighting for. That's a real issue. The CT must be in place yeah. that protects the local producer. Yes. I keep telling my Caribbean people over the years, the Caribbean is the only area in the world where you don't have a protection for the local market. Yeah. Just recently, there's a big article on the African sugar industry where they say, listen, this market is for African producers. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia is expanding. Nigeria, gentleman down there that has invested, I forget how many billions of dollars for our sugar industry yeah. in um, Nigeria, self-sufficiency. But they have a protection. You can't go in there with, 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 with whatever you want. Caribbean is the only one. And we take it from anywhere. Now, in... in you know, I think our viewers uh, have been hearing this issue for quite some time and, and trying to ensure that we, we can make it as understandable as possible. And when I think of when you, you speak of a politician's perspective, that it's more the politicians who perhaps are not interested in being able to implement the CET, which right. is the tax that should be Report levied on, on any import that's on this one sugar in this case that's yeah. coming in from outside of the Caribbean. Right. Naturally, if I'm to think like a politician, like a decision maker in any country, yes. I may be thinking, okay, if I purchase uh, or if I allow for this tax to be implemented, it will drive up the cost of production from whatever, whatever it is locally that is using that sugar, which may drive up the cost of what they're able to sell for, which will impact my voters. Yes. Is that what we're seeing? To be Some of that. To, well, to be honest, uh, it's that, that could be a perception, but it's not actually a fact. Mm -hmm. Because 
um, what we're talking about here is, is putting in place a regime that would encourage the investment needed to improve efficiencies in the industry, provide long-term pricing that would actually, and we've proven this uh, in discussions with manufacturers, l over the longer term period means that they would actually get sugar cheaper than they would if they were importing and utilizing refined Over a long sugar. term period. Yeah, because uh, when you buy refined sugar and import it, you, you're not just paying the price for the sugar. You have to freight, you've got to clear it, you've got to uh, store it, you've got to utilize it, which often means melting it. Mm -hmm. Now, if all you were doing was melting regional sugar and, and making it the standard that you want for your beverage, we've worked out, even at today's depressed prices, that um, we, I think the utilization cost of both sugars would be more or less the same with mm -hmm. the CET protected um, regional sugar. Mm -hmm. So over the long term period, we've, we've proven that in the last 20 years, for 60% of the time, it would have been beneficial for, um, for industrial users of sugar to utilize regional sugar. Um, mm. The problem we have is the 40% of the time because uh, you know, what, what you need to have in place is something where, where you can produce the product, where you can supply it, um, it should be utilized. Mm -hmm. And the way of doing that is simply, and we, we have three simple asks this week of the coated agriculture ministers on Friday. Mm -hmm. We have three simple asks. The first one is that we need to have a monitoring mechanism, a formal monitoring mechanism for sugar flows in the CARICOM because as things stand, all kinds of different types of sugars are coming in to CARICOM, often utilizing waivers for white sugar, even if it's not white sugar. The second point is enforcement of the existing rules, including and importantly on brown sugar, which we all produce but at the moment, the value of that brown sugar market has been eroded dramatically because of the CET-free importation of brown sugar from other countries, which is completely against the rules and against the law. Uh, we estimate that for sugar producers, we're losing something like $10 million US of value a year from the elimination of that market mm -hmm. value. And the third thing we're asking for, and this is really important, the third thing is we're saying treat white sugar the same as you do brown. And what all we're saying is put white sugar on something called the list of products that's ineligible for differentiated tariff treatment. Mm -hmm. What that means is that today it wouldn't change dramatically the, the system because until sugar producers can produce the right quality of sugar um, in whatever form that is, liquid sugar or refined sugar or whatever, then um, manufacturers could still receive waiver, waivers to the CET. But when sugar in, uh, producers can produce that quality, mm -hmm. uh, if it's on the list, if white sugar's on the list of uh, ineligible products, then um, the CET applies. Mm -hmm. And it's a very simple ask, the three things, very simple ask. And at a time in Belize, in particularly, where we are suffering the worst drought we've had in the last 50 years, uh, our farmers, uh, and they have a suffering massive deterioration in their cane yields. It's going to be a very, very tough period of time. Um, we, you know, are appealing to, to COTED, um, which is the trade and, and agriculture body that looks after this industry, mm -hmm. to take these issues seriously because this is meaningful to a large section of Caribbean people, not just here, but in Guyana, in Jamaica, and elsewhere. Um, I was shocked and surprised that we're having some difficulty, it seems, getting sugar on a coated agenda at a time like this. Now, I know that the government of Belize is working very hard to achieve that, but yeah. I, you know, I think what, what, we need to, what we need to do is seriously look at this issue, take it seriously. Yeah. We're taking it seriously as, as producers, and we're investing where we need to invest. Yeah. We need the regulatory framework. And you framework. want to invest, to produce well, we are, we the already are, yeah. money. Yeah. We already are. And, and the point there, I think, is we need the regulatory environment to keep up yeah. with what's actually happening on the ground. Just one further point, uh, not, not manipulating the <laughs> conversation, <laughs> Jens, but one, one further point I just wanted to make is we're having hugely constructive, dis uh, constructive discussions yeah. with many of the industri major industrial users uh, of sugar about yeah. the benefits of long-term supply of regional sugar yeah. at the right kind of quality. Often, if they n need a higher quality than the excellent plantation white sugar we produce, 
it can be done through a very simple liquef uh, liquefaction process, clarification process. Well, I'm glad you, you brought that point up <coughs> because that's, that's the obvious next question, that perhaps these uh, manufacturers don't want to purchase the sugar from within the Caribbean because perhaps it's not to a standard yeah. or quality that they are getting from these other major producers. Yes. Ruby, do you want to explain some of our discussions <laughs> recently? <laughs> the quality can be achieved. What, what Mac is talking about in reference to liquefaction or clarification would gap that. But yeah. there's also, well, going back to, to, to what Mac was talking about, taking whites and putting them on the list of ineligibles, mm -hmm. same way that brown sugar is treated, would provide a, a, an, an atmosphere for further investment. And as Mac said, manufacturers would not be at all um, they would continue to, to, to experience the, the same dynamic right now. If it's not produced within Kerrygum to their quality specifications, they will still be able to import and, and, and bring waivers yeah. to, to, to the table. But that, 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 that action of passing white sugar to, that, to the non-eligible list would provide an atmosphere of further investment for producers like ourselves to come up to, to, the, to, to the table and bring the quality that's required by the, by the manufacturers. And um, I think that it's all about the single market. Uh, if it doesn't work for sugar, then it shouldn't work for anything. Yeah. And to be honest with you, uh, I see it as the CARICOM citizens are the ones that lose out because in a community, in a market where there's continued population growth, there has to be growth economically, there has to be industry that vibrant that continues to grow and employ that's part that's part of the single market you want to nourish from within and you said <coughs> earlier it's very important for belize itself on the on the agricultural um, landscape i think it's important for the whole caricom mm -hmm. community because we have to see it as one mm -hmm. we every country has agricultural independence to one extent and it's very important to not you know give your back to the, to, the, to, the, yeah. uh, to the agriculture industry, you should be inclusive of them. I think that, that brings up something you know, important because um, you know, when Mac um, spoke about the things uh, that you were asking for, um, yes, um, those things would provide for you know, greater protection um, in the industry locally, but um, the question also is, is there room for expansion of this industry, you know, going forward, um, especially when we have um, the issues that are, you know, becoming more, um, let's say, um, burdensome because of the, uh, you know, the world market, you know, and um, where does it lead, or where will it lead the industry in the future? I mean, the, the world market uh, is is a is a dump market. Okay, so mm -hmm. we've explained it's a residual market yeah. where. <laughs> people sell the sugar in their own country, in their own region, uh, at, at high prices, and whatever's left goes into the world market. Nevertheless, the world market is also a cyclical market, and you look back over hundreds of years, and you'll see that the cycles go up and down, probably once every seven five, years, five, or five, so, five, five years. to seven years. And, and you end up uh, looking at a situation at the moment, the, the, the price of sugar is very low because there's been a large uh, surplus in the global market for various reasons for a number of years. We're expecting that surplus to change uh, into deficit next year. Well, next year. Um, that there's still stocks to use up, so it won't have a major impact on the price just now. But in the next couple of years, you'll see that price going up. Now, what we're saying to manufacturers this is a really important point because in 2011, an industrial user of sugar was paying maybe 900 US dollars for a ton of sugar, uh, which was the global market rate which could have been provided at a much lower price than that from regional sugar. Mm -hmm. Today mm -hmm. it's around 360, 380. So the, the, that shows the kind of fluctuation that manufacturers have to go through and have to manage. Now, I don't see them, many manufacturers going out of business on the basis mm -hmm. of the sugar price going up like that. But why not embrace, uh, as I believe many manufacturers are, the idea of utilizing uh, your own product in your own region where you can have long-term uh, agreements on, on where yeah. that price should lie. And that, that basically, to, to, you know, to answer your point, Gavin, because you know, it's important, rather than ride the wave of something we don't control, which is 
a global sugar market which is completely distorted in many ways. Um, let's seize what we do control, both as manufacturers and sugar producers, and come together and work, as Rui says, for this community, mm -hmm. rather than uh, looking at ways of circumventing working within this community. And what, what's crucial to this is we all agree. We all agree in the end. Um, you know, we've had some very fruitful discussions with many, many industrial users. Belize is a beautiful example where all the manufacturing utilizes uh, Belizean product. Uh, we're proud of it. We're proud of the quality. We've kept improving the quality. Um, and we're proud of uh, providing that product. But yeah. Just to be clear, because yeah. the regulations are in place, it, it, it allows for this to take place. And Correct. that's kind of what you are trying to attempt to do or right. to achieve well, in CARICOM but itself. Right. But more important, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we were discussing yesterday in a sugar stakeholder meeting that, you know, the investments that have been made um, where they have been made have repaid themselves many times over. Yeah. So, you know, this is a, what, we, what we understand as business people is this has to be a win-win situation for everybody. So a win-win for sugar producers to get the incentive to continue to invest, win-win for manufacturers who won't be disadvantaged over the long term. Win-win for the CARICOM. Car yeah. Importantly yeah. for the CARICOM Absolutely. and the Caribbean citizens and not just, you know, people who consume, uh, you know, which are a large range of products that have sugar in them, yeah. but also for our cane farmers for the whole industry, um, mm -hmm. which is hugely important to countries like Belize, Guyana, Jamaica. I suppose the, the, the sticking issue is, it's not that trade has failed in the region. There are some products going out from mm -hmm. Belize my, 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 and from uh, within the, the rest region. of the, the region itself. My question just, it keeps on lingering. Why are we not able to move forward on the issue of sugar? And so there's some points I want to clarify. What's the biggest market that we're hoping to get into? Well, right now? Yeah. The Caribbean. Yeah, I know, but which one of the islands? <laughs> well, all, all, all Trinidad. the... All, all, Any, okay. Trinidad. Jamaica, Trinidad. Has, Jamaica okay. has the largest market. Trinidad yeah. has a large market. Yeah. Uh, that just collectively, you know, as we said, there, yeah. there's a 200,000 tonne market opportunity from extra regional yeah. for sugar. Refined sugar. Refined. For refined well, sugar. For refined sugar. But the, but the brown sugar. Which you can be able and want to mm. be able to provide from Correct. what I'm hearing. Yes. Yes. So, and going back to, to the whole essence of what CARICOM was established to do, mm -hmm. and there were, there were differentiations made from the beginning. There was a recognition that there were some islands, and countries we should say, because mm -hmm. we're not an island, mm -hmm. that were more developed and there were some that were smaller and yeah. still developing. Yeah. And within yeah. that agreement itself, there yeah. are a lot of accommodations made to recognize that we will help each other. Yeah. You big developed nation like yeah. Trinidad, yeah. Jamaica, yeah. will perhaps be exempt from certain um, benefits. Yeah. Small island developing states will be yeah. allowed for additional benefits. Building on this idea of a united region, so when we, one of the small island developing states, have a product, want to sell it, can help our economy, hopefully one day move us out of this category of small island developing state, can't access one of the larger developed states. I, I'm, I'm just really having a hard time, just as a regular person that knows the basics about how our integration and process is supposed to work, as to why we're not able to get ahead. And you said you, you're having challenges even getting it on the agenda to well, be discussed. Well, we're hoping it's on the agenda. But um, I, I mean, the, the point here is that we didn't invent the common external tariff. I mean, the yeah. common external tariff is established. It's, it's well established. It's, it, it's been there for a long time. Um, it's very clear, in my view, at the end of the day, if the product's available, it should be utilized. Yeah. You know? I'll just break it down to that. Some years ago, Mm -hmm. We had a, a stakeholders meeting in Trinidad, mm -hmm. and the suggestion was put forward that Trinidad has this massive supply of cheap energy, and we proposed that we put up a refinery in Trinidad with Jamaica, Guyana, and Belize supplying the raw material, yeah. brown sugar, that would provide all the refined sugar that the region needs plus, and we would do it. The politician at the time in Trinidad jumped at it. 
So I figured that's, that makes sense. The, the guys in, in Jamaica thought it was a good idea. However, it never moved. What we have now is that Trinidad, who had a small refinery at the time. I used to buy refined sugar from Trinidad. Trinidad decided that they didn't want a two-tier economy. One supported by oil and one supported by, by sugar. But I had to go to the current minister of agriculture and point out to him that I'm not sure, I can't criticize the decision, just to say, think of it again. Some of the largest sugar refiners in the world don't grow one blade of cane, mm -hmm. but they have wealth of oil. So all these um, oil producing countries are the largest um, refineries because they use the cheap energy to do it and then you supply. So I said, just think of it. But you see what happened to us in the Caribbean? No, we figure that um, is one or the other. Mm -hmm. We are saying right now with sugar, which it should be for everybody. When you, for instance, one of the things we are pushing is that you need to have um, sugar that you can send throughout the world. We don't, most of what we are doing right now is producing sugar for the refinery. We, are, we, say we, we need to move beyond that. Yeah, yeah. We need to do the branding. For instance, Jamaica yeah. has one that we call Jamaica Gold mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. brand. I went to Grand Cayman. It was an eye opener. I went to Grand Cayman. They do nothing but packet sugar, branded sugar. Mm -hmm. And I saw sugar in there from Zambia. I said, no, it can't be. I said, yes, from Zambia. So I realized that if you do the value added, you have the free freedom mm -hmm. to move it anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. And our right. tourist industry, our tourist industry can be one of the biggest help mm -hmm. to help to spread it out. Because each tourist coming here, leave with a package of um, you know, your, your Belizean special, Mm -hmm. Demarara from, from um, Guyana, mm -hmm. Jamaica Gold from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It's one we are benefiting from that. So cool. the other thing that we have yeah. introduced, let me, let me tell you, Marcos pointing out to this. We're saying that it's not just buy and sell sugar. We can have an industry that really is as developed as anything. So a guy, want, a guy wants, he say he wants 100,000 tons of sugar this year. We sit down with him from the start. It's okay, fine. But tell us when you want it, what you want it, and we're gonna agree on a price. Also, we have had to deal with the disease of currency. Some people can't find the US dollar to buy for the sugar, so talk to the commercial banks. You say, okay, fine, we will facilitate the trade. Yeah. You know, somebody has to pay like a premium, but we facilitate. So yeah. all those are being put on the table right now for a sugar trade industry. Mm -hmm. Sugar industry in the trading in the region that encompasses every aspect of it. It's not just Okay, put on the CC and that. No, we are able to be able to do what yeah. other trading. So you're people not looking do. at just uh, an ad hoc solution no, to this no, no, issue no, no. now. Yes. You want to develop something long term. Long term. term. It, you know, it's important to point out that, that this conversation didn't just start, right? Um, mm -hmm. We we, mm -hmm. we knew the uh, access to the European <coughs> market was going to end, end, and we knew definitively in yes. 2017. My question is, ha did the conversation start from then? Did no, we no. start? Yeah. trying because it was important for all of us to find new markets yeah. to access yeah. before 2017 came to a close. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting actually Marlene that the issue of the CET and sugar has been on the coated agenda for decades uh, actually. Now I think certainly it's like that situation where you're uh, you're standing on a bridge and when it starts burning suddenly you figure you've got to get yeah. off that bridge pretty bridge. quickly so uh, you know certainly the conversation has accelerated yeah. um, it's been a healthy conversation, yeah. largely, because, you know, we went to Coted two years ago now with a blueprint for what we're talking about. Uh, Mr. Samuda, the, the then Minister of Agriculture for Jamaica, quite rightly said, guys, cart before the horse. Go talk to the manufacturers, to the industrial users of sugar. Yeah. Come up with an agreement. Bring it back to Coted. We will uh, pass it. That's exactly what we've done. We've spent two years talking to industrial users. Not everyone's on board. No. But the vast majority see the benefit of utilizing regional sugar, in, particularly in liquid sugar form, which is beneficial for their processes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here we are coming towards uh, what we would hope will be a conclusion at the COTED trade ministers meeting in November. 
and I'm grateful that Government of Belize have, yes. have indicated to <laughs> us that they want to make yeah. sure that this is concluded at that point in time. We, Max, we don't just to introduce, so. you were talking about talking to the manufacturers <laughs> and they're on board. Manufacturers that currently are um, able to access and to, to, to get benefit from the single market for their final product as well. Yeah. It's nothing different than no. what... No. Yeah. I mean, we, we had this discussion at the stakeholder meeting yesterday that beverage uh, companies already have a CET protection of 20% yeah. uh, on their products to, pro exactly. to protect them from uh, other extra-regional imports. Yeah. You know, maybe uh, if, if they're looking at impacts of, of uh, sugar pricing, that maybe needs to go up a little, I don't know. But the, the, the point behind all of this is that um, CARICOM sugar producers can provide sugar without the CT. Okay? Mm -hmm. All we're suggesting is that other, if we can provide that quality sugar, the other ones who want to bring it in yeah. should pay the CT. Yeah. And what we also want to provide is to eliminate or mitigate the, the world market price risk and volatility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because we would be able to Provide bring a, bring a, a level of stability. So, exactly. so, so we're, we're hoping a number of things, uh, you know, that this monitoring mechanism gets approved uh, urgently yeah. mm -hmm. and quickly. That's important. There's no point having any form of CET or anything else if it's not monitored. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the enforcement of the rules as they exist today, particularly on brown sugar, which all of our markets are losing out in value at the moment. And thirdly, that uh, to encourage the in incentivize this investment, that you know, when that product is made and, and, and can be provided, that the CET applies. Uh, and all of those things can be done, we believe, within the next few months. Mm -hmm. That's a hope. Once yeah. there is agreement yeah. Yeah. on this issue. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we, we, you had your stakeholders meeting yesterday, and just, just in interest of being able and maximizing the time. Um, there is another meeting taking place on Friday, you said? Quarter. Well, there, 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 yeah. there's a quarter. Two, two, two further meetings. There's a yeah. sugar minister's meeting today, today, which will consider the outcomes from the meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there's a coated agriculture meeting, which yeah. covers all agricultural issues on the Friday. Right. Yeah. And then coated, the actual coated meeting takes place in November. There, there are two different coated meetings. One is agriculture, one is trade. Yeah. Um, the one on Friday is agriculture here in Belize. The trade uh, coated will take place in Guyana in November. Yeah. So what you've indicated is that the last time you attempted to bring this issue to COTED, you were told, kind of go back and do your homework. Make sure the manufacturers are on board. Yes. So you went back and you did your homework. You Correct. talked to the manufacturers. Yes. Clearly saying, maybe we don't have 100% buying, but we have well, sufficient buying yeah. to know yeah. that the market is interested in welcoming us yeah. at the prices and the stability and all the other things we're offering. How optimistic are you that 2019 will be the year that we can break through on this issue. One, one additional point is yeah. uh, certainly 30 million US dollar investment in BSI to increase value added, um, 10 million dollar investment in Gai Sucro to produce white sugar, uh, 250 million dollar investment in a sugar mill, an additional sugar mill here in Belize that can pro provide added value sugar. So. All of that time, we've been building up the product, and we've yeah. been building up the uh, the argument, if you like, in that sense. Um, I'm, you know, if 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 people are listening to the real arguments here, if people are really considering the future that we've talked about this morning of the CARICOM, of the community, of the single market, um, I would like to be optimistic that we can uh, achieve real progress this year, mm -hmm. and that. Certainly, the three points we've set out, I think, are achievable. Yeah. I think uh, there will need to be political agreement, obviously, to those things. Uh, there will be some detractors, clearly. Um, but uh, it seems to make common sense to me on the basis of political and the pushing of the single market for Caribbean citizens and all the livelihoods it will protect for economic advantage for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, uh, it, it just kind of makes sense that you have an agricultural industry that you're encouraging rather than one you're pushing out of business. Yeah. And Mr. Mr. Holt's approach has given me a lot of hope mm -hmm. that things will happen mm -hmm. because ministers who are not committed tend to waffle. <laughs> He's not waffling. He's very committed that this has happened this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving him all the support and I'm putting my hat 
<laughs> on him leading the charge. Yeah. Plus he has um, the gentleman from the minister from um, Mr. Holder. Mr. Holder from, um, from, from Diana. Diana. Mm -hmm. He has uh, Mr. Hutchinson from Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah. I expect that those guys will make sure for the benefit of their industry and the overall Caribbean that it works. He also has the support of the minister from uh, Barbados. Barbados, well. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. with uh, Prime Minister Barbados being such an advocate for the single market, market. and yeah. the success of it. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we continue to stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's what continue we'll do to, to keep yeah. us updated. I think yeah. it is a very critical issue. It's complex. Um, but once we, once we bring it down to just essentially coming back to one, survival of yeah. us as uh, Caribbean people yeah. and the industries we do have and moving towards an actual yeah. integrated single, single market. market. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but thank you for coming in and uh, best of luck. Thank, thank, you thank both thank of you. you. Lovely thank to see you. Much. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about an upcoming job fair at Transparent BPO. So please stay tuned.